Hello Internet. Um, today I'd like to share with you a free reballing jig. Hopefully uh, this uh, design will drive uh, Chinese uh, reballing jigs markets down to the ground, given the fact that this is completely free. Uh, so basically what this is is what I'll be using uh, reballing cores the uh, posts in the middle this is all one print there's no support nothing uh, each base will be designed specifically for uh, type uh, or size core so basically this type of core goes on 3080 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30 ti 90 90 uh, 30 90 ti 30 90 uh, 40 90s uh, so exact same type of uh, layout uh, this one here for example this one runs i believe 3060 3070 3070 ti 4080 uh, 4060 i think and 4070 also i'm not exactly sure uh, i think and uh, i haven't printed one for the 7900 78 uh, 7900 xt xt or 7900 xt x same thing i haven't printed that yet uh, but the concept is there is the same and uh, basically Chip goes in here and these posts here. They're kind of Because they're kind of isolated from the 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 the, the rest of the uh, part so to speak You can kind of see that they're standing off on the base So there's a little bit of flex to them and that flex is just in Easily put the chip in there you know, you're just gonna, you don't drop it in, you just put it in there. Super easy, it's super flat. And uh, clean it out. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and do that real quick. We might even reball this chip today just for a demonstration purpose. And by the way, when you're done printing this thing, uh, what you want to do is take a sandpaper and just run the edges around, like these, these edges here, and then this edge here. So basically you want to uh, smooth out the ridges just a, a little tiny bit depends on how how accurate your printer is so that way the uh, top part will slide in uh, very easily so and the top part is ba is is also uh, one part um, so I have uh, 10 by 2 magnets glued uh, you can just press them in uh, again it just depends on the quality of your printer whether it's going to be uh, compatible, uh, able to print it with the enough quality. I printed this in a 0 0.12 uh, millimeter height or something like that. And so, yeah, that goes right in, like super, super easy. Almost, almost no movement anywhere. Uh, so, the uh, thought process behind this design was uh, the stencil goes in like this, and... Um, and there's slight, I slightly oversized the, the, the cutout for the stencil, just so that you can do some micro adjustments. And the micro adjustments is the reason why I have these cutouts here on the sides as well. So that's just going to go in here and we can look under the microscope, see, see how well we're centered. I mean, we're pretty centered, you know, we're not far off. I'm just going to move. And basically what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing the stencil by the edge and I'm just kind of moving it a little bit. See, there's a little bit of play. Very little tiny play. But it's enough to get your balls uh, lined up. See, so we're, we're like almost perfect. Yeah, so we're perfect right there. So lift. See, stencil's not going to go anywhere. It's still centered, still perfectly aligned. The chip isn't going anywhere because it's kind of held in place by a very little tension there is on the core from the posts that are around its perimeter. And um, we can apply flux. You don't want to be pushing on this thing too hard. Um, otherwise it might. Oh, it doesn't. I thought it was going to go like, but it doesn't. I don't know what the word for that is. So we're going to apply some flux, and we're going to, 
Yeah, you probably want to send the top off a little bit because you know the printer it kind of leaves a little bit of a, uh, a small bumps on the on the very uh, on the corners of the print when you print it. So you just smooth it out on like a like p put a piece of glass and some kind of a um, thought, um, uh, what do you call the sandpaper on there? Maybe like a 120 or not even 120. I'd probably go higher, 180 maybe 220 grit. And just kind of just kind of move around a little bit, you know, a couple of times, then you're done. Yeah, there's no need to grind this thing. And this thing is printed with the PLA, so PLA will give you the most accurate print. So there's very little shrinking going on. See, I'm tapping on the core, and it's not going to lift. Super easy. So the only thing you have to pay for here is the filament. Obviously, you have to have a printer and some magnets. So put that down here. And so now the only thing to keep in mind is that, let me show you, because uh, like on a on a normal, oh, let me show you on a normal jig, the cutout is from the top. See, the cutout is from the top. I do not have a cutout from the top. The cutout is actually on the bottom to allow printing upside down. Uh, so um, I could probably rethink my strategies later. Maybe no, I probably won't. And so the uh, the drain path is as you can see here it's kind of on the slope uh, but in this case the drain is just going straight out so if you have balls here and if you tilt it there it's just going to start running out uh, right away so you kind of have to keep that in mind so that's like the only downside of this you know you can't just go you know start shaking it i mean you could but you're running a risk so just kind of be careful in this corner so kind of keep it tilted this way so that the balls don't end up falling out. See? If you tilt it this way, they're just going to go out. Are we done? I think so. I think we're done, yeah. Let's, let's have a look. Make sure that we have all the holes uh, filled. And this, this core is dead anyway, so I don't really care. A little bit of balls did drop on the ground because of that angle. But I think... I think we're good. Yeah, it looks good. I don't even think I need any kind of adjustment. Maybe I could move a little bit. Uh, the holes are perfectly aligned. It's just the balls are a little bit smaller than they should be. And uh, I think that looks good. So let's go ahead and lift this. Slowly get it lifted. There we go. One ball stuck. A um, couple of balls got stuck inside of the stencil. And uh, looks like one ball here. Got stuck on top of the other ball. You know, and we can... Oh, yeah, two balls got stuck together. Uh, we can put it anywhere we like. I'm not going to reball this core anyway because it's dead. Why bother? So, but just just a demonstration that this is a very functional stencil, and uh, hopefully uh, this will be uh, um, my contribution to the repair community. So, I mean, what else you want me to do? So, and this comes out relatively easily. Just grab it by the corners. See right there, super easy. Um, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, uh, do some experience with the 78, uh, 7900 XT, because I think we might have. I think I might have to do some more openings here in the edges so that I can kind of grab the core uh, easier. Because yeah, I, I can already see a problem. There's not enough opening here, so I will go ahead and fix that. And uh, this one here is relatively easy. Just grab it. Yeah, but for the 7900 XT, I'm gonna have to uh, open these things up just a little bit more. Uh, but the top will remain the same regardless so and I didn't want to uh, complicate the prints with uh, like pieces gluing together and whatnot though uh, you could we could um, potentially print a small ramp inside of here to prevent the uh, unwanted spill so that's uh, 
optional, I suppose. But I think that's it. Yeah, so uh, hopefully this uh, was uh, entertaining and most importantly helpful to all of you out there who are trying to save money not buying these uh, very expensive uh, fancy reballing jigs that I have three. Yeah, I got like three of these. Because, um, you know, it's time consuming to switch from one to another, so I just ended up buying a whole jig and not saving me any money doing so, man. Now I have a way to save money, so. Anyway, um, I also have my uh, first uh, failed attempt for a 5090. 5090 is going to be using a 120 millimeter uh, stencil, so it's a pretty big guy. And, uh, I mean, I could probably use it the way it is, like this, but I want it to be encased in the uh, similar design as this, with the exception of, obviously, it's going to be bigger. Uh, though I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to be handling this. It's going to be a little bit difficult. I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe I will... Maybe instead of doing this 120 millimeters, I will uh, um, get a, a chip size stencil and adjust to that. Uh, probably be a lot cheaper, uh, not only to buy the stencil, but also the uh, jig itself is going to stay the exact same size. I'll just have to make some adjustments there. And that will be it. Thank you for watching and have a blessed day. Goodbye.